Today I want to show you the behind the scenes of last night's uh, Milky Way shoot. Okay, the first part I want to do is show you the actual lights I use for these uh, shoots. The lights I love using is called uh, Gold Zero Lighthouse. These are great little lights. You can uh, power it up right here. And then uh, basically what you do is you hit it and then you hit it again and then you hold it down to the lowest setting. And I always set these on the very low setting because the amount of light my camera picks up during Milky Way shoots. Probably your wife or your, if you have some daughters or something, they have like hair ties laying all over the house. So I, I stole like three of them and because they got three different lights. So they work pretty good. So definitely take your daughter's uh, or your wife's hair ties. They'll love you for that. So I had three different lights set up. One was set up on a tree, I set up a second tripod last night and put it kind of right to the left of my camera to light up the foreground. And then I had the third light was set up inside the tent. Once again, I had them all three on the very lowest settings. Okay, my lens I love using for these Milky Way shots is a broken on AE 14 millimeter 2.8. And then I also do manual focus on it. So you have affinity, but I always like to pull it back just a little bit. It seems to make the focus work the best. And then my aperture here, I always like to set at 2.8. So I bring that down 2.8. Now, depending on the camera, you won't have to mess with this. Um, you'll be able to do it in the camera. This is the Nikon Z6, the one faulty thing they do have with it. Is with this uh, Nikon FTZ adapter. Uh, for some reason, when I added this lens onto this camera, the uh, aperture would be fluctuating all the time for these shots. So to fix it, I actually had to put a little electrical tape on the little sensors here uh, just to make that work. So basically what you want to do is cover up these sensors right here with some electrical tape and then put the lens onto there if you just happen to be using one of these adapters on the Nikon cameras but this lens is awesome and I use it for so many different types of shoots it also works good for uh, doing uh, landscapes also so love this lens okay now I want to do is actually show you the behind the scenes settings I use on my Nikon for doing these Milky Way shots and after doing a lot of experimenting over the last few years, this actual setting for doing time lapses worked the best. I always do all my time lapses with interval timer shooting, and they also have time lapse movie, but I do not recommend using the time lapse movie for doing Milky Way shots. It doesn't work that great. Okay, so inside of here, let me hit OK, just to show you my settings. I do an interval of every 18 seconds. So basically my exposure on my camera is 15 seconds. And then I give it about two seconds before the next shot kicks in. I did five hours of shooting, um, which works out to about 900 photographs. I always keep the exposure smoothing on. And I also like to do is I always like to use the timer. So what I'll do a lot of times, especially when we're camping, I know we'll go to bed probably an hour before the actual Milky Way showing at this time of year just because it comes out so late. So I'll actually set the timer and when to actually activate and stuff. And then a couple other good tips. I always shoot in RAW format. Don't shoot in JPEG because for editing in Lightroom makes a huge difference for these Milky Way shots. And a couple last good tips is that the exposure I set at 6400 ISO for 15 seconds. So basically the camera will open up for 15 seconds, take the shot. And then once again, the aperture, you wanna have it set at about 2.8, get the maximum amount of light coming in there. Last key thing I wanna show you guys is the battery pack setup. Cause if you use a stock battery, you're only gonna get about an hour and a half of footage before your camera dies. The setup I ended up using, what I have is a dummy battery here. I actually bought this off of uh, B and H. A lot of pros and cons on the reviews, but this is the only thing I found that actually works really well. It's these dummy batteries. And then when I have it set up, I've got it plugged in right here, which then goes through 
the case relay. Definitely need this case relay to make this work right. Try to bypass this case relay um, directly into the battery pack here, but that didn't work, so this is still a must. Another good handy thing to do is add some Velcro on your tripod. So at nighttime, you can just stick that sucker right on there. And then I'll show you the battery pack I have. A lot of times I'll just kind of hang it. Do it here. It's fun doing this stuff one hand. This is just an anchor battery pack. With these ones, I always have to make sure I hit this button to activate it. If I don't do that, then the next thing I know, my time lapses turn out to be a total failure at nighttime. What's neat about this, we have two ports on it, and this is where the charging cable goes in. What I like using two ports for is during the fall time, when we start getting those frosty nights, is I can plug one for the camera, and the other one is for a heater. It goes around my lens there to keep it from frosting up overnight. So that works pretty slick. Anyways, this is kind of a real basic behind the scenes. It's, uh, I could definitely go way in depth on uh, time lapses in the future, which I kind of want to show because it's kind of a cool art skill to do and it's kind of a neat way to sell some of your stuff online. You do see a lot of TV shows and movies nowadays use these time lapses. And I also sell some of my time lapses on Pond5 and a couple other websites out there too. And then I do get people directly emailing me where I will, depending on their productions, I'll sell these time lapses to them too. So anyways, just a beautiful Colorado day out here. Enjoying the just nice weather. Definitely got some good mosquitoes flying around, but a little bit of breeze helps that out. Until next time, we'll catch you guys on the next video.